breakfast in 10 minutes. I have a surprise for you. Dan called a little while ago and guess what? What? You're pitching today. What about Randy? Oh, he's sick. His mom called Dan and Dan called me and said you're pitching. So I fixed a breakfast fit for a starting pitcher. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Stay right free! <laughs> Come here. Listen. So you're doing great. But just don't get rattled, all right? And quit worrying about that big kid. Look, when you're on the mound, you're the big kid. Okay? I swear that last ball RT threw actually danced. That was his knuckleball. Really? I've never seen David throw one. Marlene, David plays right field. Okay, RT, come on, buddy. Do it. You're the big guy. Think about what you're doing. Ball one. Don't look now, but there's a very interesting guy that's been staring at you for the longest time. I said, don't look now? Why do people always do that? I don't see anybody. All right, let's go. Try again over by the tables. <laughs> I'm okay. Cross your heart? Mom, don't say cross your heart anymore. Nobody talks like that. Don't forget you pitched five great innings today. It was a six inning game. So, next time out, you'll pitch six great innings. I choked. You didn't choke? You made one bad pitch? was a mistake. Pros don't choke. I choked, Mom. RT, you know the difference between pros and 11-year-old boys just starting out in Little League? Pros know how to cut their losses and come back and try harder next time. Don't let the past beat you, honey. Just let it go. OK? Will you sleep on that? I love you, Mom. You better. Dan, can we take a rain check on the movies? No, it's not just because of RT, but I can't ignore the fact he doesn't exactly feel like player of the year. I'm sorry, honey. It's just been, well, I don't know, a long day. I'll tell you what, I'll get a good night's sleep and uh, tomorrow we'll really do something fun, okay? Sorry, I 
I didn't call, but I wanted to surprise you. You surprised me. I got two medium pizzas loaded to the gills. Two? Yeah. Well, you know how guilty I feel about picking out alone. Oh, in case there's any lingering doubt that we're not into Major Gluttony, the Spala Cabernet. I have been told that it is an impudent little devil with a hard body and naughty thoughts. Did I uh, come at the wrong time, Lacey? I already ate with our tea. Mm. Okay. Is it Dan? What has Dan got to do with anything? Mm -hmm. It's Saturday night. I just have all this painting I have to do. Is it that guy? What guy? You know, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome by the picnic tables at the park. Oh, him. Oh, him. Don't tell me that's what this is about. Oh, Marlene. That wasn't worth a bottle of wine and two pizzas. Maybe a cracker and some cheese spread. Oh, come on. Don't kid a kidder. What's the big deal anyway? Remember me, best friend, share of secrets? I saw your face when you looked at him. I have never seen you look like that in all the years we've known each other. Five. Well, five's a lot. You're gonna be disappointed. I'll be the judge of that. Okay. He was just this guy I used to date a long time ago in L.A. Yeah, now it's getting interesting. Come on. Well, one night... We had this fight, I mean, this sort of an argument. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got out of the car, mm -hmm. and I thought he'd come after me, you know, at least drive me home or something, but he didn't. He took off with my purse and my keys, and I had to walk home. <laughs> that was that. Never saw him again. End of story, Z. Aren't you disappointed? Why are you looking at me like that? Why don't I believe you? That is a question better answered by you. Hi, Lace. Long time no see. Hi. Who's that guy? What guy? Lacey, I need to talk. Date isn't even the right word. I mean, we went to the movies once, and and uh, and this other time, he he took me to a baseball game that he was playing in. Yeah. It wasn't a big romance or anything. He kissed me goodnight at the door, and and then he'd want to come in, and I'd say no. And God, this is hard. <laughs> He raped you. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry. But what was that? Ten years ago? Twelve. Twelve. So what's happening now? What's changed? What's changed is he's out of prison. Prison? He went to prison for it? Well, it's against the law, you know, Marlene. But still, 
he used a knife, a kitchen knife. You know that scar I have right here? Well, then he deserved to go to prison. Oh, thank you very much. Why is he here? I mean, it can't be for revenge. You don't go out in public places if you want revenge. Well, there's more. I, I didn't tell you the truth about Artie's father. He didn't die in a car crash. He didn't die at all. Does anyone know the truth about this? My sister in St. Paul. You never said anything to R.T.? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to have him deal with something as ugly as that. Marlene, I need help. Well, I know this guy. He's vicious. Totally unprincipled. Everything you want in a lawyer. I'll call him first thing in the morning. Forgive me for asking this, but it's, it's just one of those questions you have to ask. Why didn't I have an abortion? Well, I almost did. I made an appointment. I even went to the oh, clinic. sweetie, 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 it's going to be OK, I promise. Lacey, what do you think? Oh, look, you know, I don't think this color is really for you, but I have some great sweaters over here I want you to oh. see. Here. I'll put my things down and be right with you. Anything? Well, just a couple reps from San Francisco uh, said they'd call back later. Ooh. Can't wait to see their new line. Lacey, if you don't stop buying everything in stock at wholesale, we'll never have anything left for our customers. Oh, and someone stopped by for you today. Did he leave a name? How did you know it was a he? Jane, could I use the office for a few minutes? Sure. Is everything OK? All right. What is it? Why are you here? What are you trying to do? That's not much of a greeting after all these years, Lace. Don't call me that. Why are you here? I'm out. I'm free. Ten years, two months, and one day. I wasn't counting. Well, I was. All right, you're out. Congratulations. Good luck in your new life. I'm glad you feel that way. It'll make it a lot easier on our son. How can you stand there and say that? There is no our son. There is no our anything. That boy I saw pitching on Saturday, half of him is mine. Get out of here! Or what? Oh, I'll call the police. Oh, excuse me. Like it or not, that kid is mine. And I've got the same rights that any other father does. You haven't seen the end of this. What you're seeing is just the beginning. We used to date, did I mention that? <laughs> yep, I was hoping for a while to become Mrs. Elliot Colby instead of plain old Marlene Thomas, but then we got to know each other. He's still a wonderful lawyer, though. You know, you're driving me crazy with the knives and forks. Sorry. He must have got held up in traffic. You know, I think I'll go to the ladies' room, and he'll be here when I come back, OK? Excuse me, are you Lacey Stewart? Yes, Mr. Colby.
cute guy, blue jacket behind you. Well, you see what's wrong. What is that? A subpoena. I'm being sued. You're being sued by who? Keith Wells. This is unbelievable. He's suing you for what? Joint custody of RT. You mean he can actually do this? Do what? Sue her? You can sue anybody for anything. Winning, however, is an entirely different matter. Can he? Win? Joint custody? Highly unlikely. That's the good news. The bad news is I doubt very much if joint custody is what he has in mind. My guess is it's the first shot fired. A bluff. I think he'd settle for conventional visitation in a New York minute. No court in the world would grant visitation to somebody like that, would they? Hmm. In Montana, probably not, but in California, possibly. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Well, look at it from the court's point of view. He's paid his debt to society. Unless we can establish otherwise, he's a rehabilitated man anxious to accept his responsibilities. All right, I, I know what you're going to say. I don't disagree with you. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what you're up against. According to the order to show cause, he's representing himself. I can give him a call, see what he's got in mind. It doesn't matter. What doesn't? What he's got in mind. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to negotiate with him. I'm going to fight him every inch of the way if I have to. All right. I've got a first-class investigator. He's like a dog on a scent. We'll see what we can come up with. It's going to be OK. You keep saying that. Well, I keep feeling like you don't believe me. Well, you heard what he said. I don't understand the system. It's not like Keith has to prove he's responsible or prove anything at all. It's like all he has to do is show up. I'm the one with the burden of proof. Don't listen to me. I'm not to be taken seriously right now. Have you thought about telling Dan? I've thought about it. Well, you gonna? I guess I should. I think you're gonna have to. RT, too. Not RT. Not unless it's absolutely necessary. Well, what's it gonna take to make it absolutely necessary? Losing in court. I don't understand why you didn't tell me before. I think I would have eventually. What difference does it make anyway? I mean, does it change anything between us? You're missing the point. What is the point? Please tell me the point so we can get it out of the way. All right, put yourself in my place. Here we are talking about a future together, and suddenly I find out that there's this huge piece of your life that you chose not to tell me. And I don't understand why, and it bothers me. I mean, it scares me. It makes me wonder what else you haven't told me. You know, this whole thing just reminds me of what happened with my ex-wife. And God knows I couldn't go through something like that again. Dan, I am not your ex-wife. I'm not cheating on you. Why won't you look at me? This isn't about you. It's about me. About my fear, trying to bury the past. Trying to convince myself that what's happening now couldn't ever really happen. Please, honey, don't make it any worse than it is. I'm sorry, Lacey. I guess it just scares up old demons, that's all. Come here. Don't worry about me, okay? Okay. I'm with you all the way. First, we have a court date. Mm -hmm. The 26th, it's a week from tomorrow. The hearing will be held at family court in the new courthouse, 10 a.m. Why family court? This isn't a family matter. This Lacey, slow down. It's okay. This is not a criminal case. Family court was set up specifically for cases like this. It's less formal, more like a hearing. Here, sign this. What is it? It's a petition for a restraining order. If it's granted, Keith Wells won't be able to come within 500 feet of you or your home. Here. 
to sign. Do those things really work? Depends on what you expect from them. Right now, it's more a matter of uh, positioning, strategy. It tells the court we're afraid of this man. Why haven't we heard from the investigator? It's been over two weeks. Well, we have. I've got a five-page report in my office if you want to read it. Can't be much in it if you didn't bring it with you. A few scrapes in prison, apparently nothing very serious. After he was transferred from medium security to minimum, he took college courses in horticulture, of all things. The uh, parole report states that he has, quote, a reverence for living things. I'm going to be sick. Uh, he has a, uh, an apartment near Ocean Avenue. He has a job. He has enrolled in night courses at Saracosta College. Oh, let me guess. Horticulture, right? Yeah, he may not make much of a father, but he'll make somebody a hell of a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lacey, wait. I'm sorry if I sounded a bit glib. I do that sometimes. You didn't sound glib. You sounded like we're wasting our time. Like he's going to win. Keith Wells, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Lacey Stewart, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. Mr. Wells, you're representing yourself in this matter, is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Colby, you're representing Ms. Stewart. That's right, Your Honor. All right, let's get down to business. For those of you who aren't familiar with family court, we don't do Perry Mason here. We keep it simple and direct. I've read the briefs by both parties. Let's start with the petition for visitation. Mr. Wells, you were released from the state penitentiary. How long ago? Just over a month ago, Your Honor. Why the sudden interest in becoming an active father? It's not a sudden interest, Your Honor. I have letters and birthday cards I've sent for years. It's all returned. Your Honor. You may remain seated, Miss Stewart. I moved, Your Honor, and, and if there was any mail sent back, it was years ago, eight or nine years ago. Mr. Wells, show me the cards and letters. Just dump them on the table there. Your Honor, I appreciate the drama of Mr. Wells' version of show and tell. The court should be aware the child in question, Arthur R.T. Stewart, was only a baby at the time, which placed Miss Stewart in the position of having to open mail from a man recently convicted of raping her, of violently raping her, I think it should be noted. May I protest, Your Honor? Why does everyone want to stand up today? Please sit down, Mr. Wells. Now, what is it you want to say? I never used a weapon on her, Your Honor. In fact, I never raped her. Your Honor, I object. This man was tried and convicted of first-degree rape. And to sit here and listen... You've made your point, Mr. Colby. I quite agree. And thank you for not standing. I don't expect miracles, Your Honor. I gave up believing in them a long time ago. All I want is a chance to live my life like a free man again. Like a man who's found the capacity for forgiveness when forgiveness was necessary. I believe it was Skinner who said, to deny the belief in profound human change is to deny belief in the most fundamental aspect of human existence. I guess that's about it, Your Honor. I, I love my son. I'd like to think that I could help him steer a course in life. I respectfully hope I get a chance to try. I don't hate Mr. Wells. I used to. I did for a long time. There was a time when I wished they'd keep him in prison forever. And there was a time when I was so afraid that he'd escape and come after my son and me that I moved constantly. So five years ago, I moved for the last time. I wanted to make a permanent home here. I think I'm doing that. And then, out of nowhere, here he is. I can't describe to you just how that feels. Just how frightening it is when you've seen the real person inside. And I'm not the only woman that Mr. Wells has taken out his contempt and rage on. I object, Your Honor. What's true, it's true. It came out at the trial. That'll do, both of you. 
We're not here to retry Mr. Wells' previous conviction. You may continue, but keep it brief and to the point. But there's one thing I do know, and I know it to the bottom of my soul. Mr. Wells isn't here out of love. He's here for revenge. Whenever I hear someone say, this is not an easy case, I feel like saying, what is? Despite that, I am now going to say, this is not an easy case. We have two parties, both highly presentable, equally credible, despite coming from very different lives, very different perspectives, and personal histories. I want this to work. I believe it can. As an officer of the court, I'm going to act on that belief. For a trial period of six months, I hereby grant Mr. Wells conditional visitation, a maximum of 12 hours per week. The conditions are the visitation be arranged through the good offices of a third party, which is to say we need an intermediary to make this work. Any suggestions? Um. I'd be glad to help if, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. The reason for this is because I'm also granting Ms. Stewart's petition for restraining order during the probationary period. Is that clearly understood, Mr. Wells? It's not necessary, Your Honor. But yes, it's clearly understood. Thank you. Both petitions granted, aforementioned conditions duly noted. Make this work. I'm talking to both of you. This hearing is adjourned. How can you do this? How can you do this? I might have expected this judgment from a man, but you! Do you just stop being a woman because you're wearing a black robe? I'm very sorry you feel this way. You're sorry? Look what he did to me! He raped me! You get raped sometime and see how it feels! You get raped and then tell me I have to share my child with this animal! Good. You got something to tell me, Mom? Why would you say that? Because it's my favorite place. The last time you brought me here for dinner, I wanted to talk about you and Dan. You're a real student of human nature, honey. Maybe you'll become another Skinner. Who's that? Never mind. I want you to read this letter in case I can't get through what I want to tell you, you know, in case I chicken out. You know I can't read the way you write. Why don't you just tell me? I, uh... I haven't told you the truth about certain things. About things in the past. Like what? Like about your father. He didn't die in a car crash. And how did he die? He didn't die, sweetheart. He's still alive. I'm sorry. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I should have told you the truth from the very beginning, but... Uh, the reason I didn't was because your father was sent to prison and I didn't think you'd ever see him. I didn't want you to grow up thinking you came from a bad person. Can you understand that? What did he do? Uh, well, we can talk about that later, but right now, what I need to tell you is that He's out of prison, and he wants to see you. He wants to see me? Yeah. Mom? Yes, honey? Can we go now? Are you all right? I mean, do, do you want to tell me what you're feeling? Don't forget your letter.
Ah, you're right on time. Hi, RT. Hi. How's it going? Good. So how do you feel so far? I'm a wreck. You got time for a quick cup of coffee? It's not gonna be here for another 30 minutes. I don't think I should. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I'll be waiting for your call. RT, I'm leaving. Okay, bye. Now go home, relax. I won't let them out of my sight, believe me. Did I mention on the phone that I was coming along? Uh, several times. I'm glad for the company. Well, this is it. I'll get our tea. Our tea? This is Keith. Hi. Hi. All right, good job. Tommy, take it. Son David's got the makings of a pretty good ball player. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's quick. He's got fast hands. But he's afraid of the ball. He is. It's correctable in a boy his age. Catch a ball. I could work with him if you like. A good ball player can never bring fear out onto the field. Here is a terrible curse. Okay, right All right, way to go. Good catch. Sucks the life right out of you. You uh, know a lot about fear, Mr. Wells? Yeah. I survived over 10 years in prison. I should. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gee. I'm sorry. sorry. It's okay. Marlene? Lacey, you're not going to believe this. It, it's like he spent the last 10 years being father of the year instead of where he was. You know, even Dan seems to like him. Well, Keith calls him coach. And, and you know Dan. He's a pushover for anyone who calls him coach. Lacey, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Marlene. That's great. I couldn't be happier. RT, I, I want you to know that this is awkward for me, too. Yeah. Hey, I, I don't expect you to feel a certain way or, or even act a certain way around me. Let's just be natural with each other. Let's let what happens happen, OK? OK. Mom never told me you play professional ball. A couple of years, AAA. What team? Bakersfield Broncos. Really? With the Yankees? Yeah. What position? Catcher. It's cool. All I ever wanted to do in life was play ball. Come on, guys. Let's go. Snap it up. So what are we going to pitch this kid? How about a knuckleball? You got a knuckleball? Yeah. That's I got to say.
this we're going to put on you, right around your waist, like a little diamond. Maybe we should call it quits for today. No, I can do it. Let me go for it now. RT, we can come back another day. Uh, we're wasting time just talking about it. Technique's the same whether it's two feet or 200. No, duh. Yeah, well, you just take it nice and easy going down. No Hollywood rappelling like I was doing, OK? OK. I don't know about this, Keith. Hey, he'll be all right. I'll tie a safety line on him. If he gets tired, we'll just pull him back up. Dad here? Dan, thank you for this. Hey, I'm having a great time. I don't mean just today. You're in a potentially awkward position, and, well, you've been real decent toward me. As long as you know how much I appreciate it. Nah, no problem. Hey! Come on! Upside down, we'll pull him right out of the harness. Oh, Can he ride himself? I don't even know if he's conscious. <sighs> Keith, put on a harness, man. You'll kill yourself. where a faulty piece of rented climbing equipment caused a near tragedy, averted at the last minute by a father's daring rescue of an 11-year-old local boy. Now, a bystander near the face of the cliff caught the entire incident on his home video camera, and here it is. Dan, this is an amazing piece of tape. That's right, Linda. Right here we see the boy begin his descent. Wait, whoa! There he goes! He's hanging upside Something down. Something must be wrong. 
Macy, the doctor said she wanted to give him a complete exam. It takes time. Come on, don't worry so much. Figure eight broke. Just snap. Yeah, sure, I was scared, I guess. I don't know. I... You don't think about the danger when it's your own son. But, you know, really, I'm not, you know, the only hero. What a great Relax. <laughs> RT is fine. He's got some abrasions, some bruises. Otherwise, he's in good shape. Mm -hmm. yeah, you ready to go repelling again? <laughs> yeah? You ready to go repelling again? <laughs> oh, <laughs> please. You gotta see that, that tape. Right? That ball. Honey, really? Is Kate yeah. still back here? Yeah, as far as I know. Why? Could you guys wait for me for a second? Oh, sure. Sure. I didn't want to leave without thanking you. I mean, I mean, I guess you saved R.T.'s life. I guess I did. I hope this isn't violating any restraining orders. I hate to go to jail for just being thanked. Well, I just wanted to thank you. It's frightening, you know, to think a little thing like a figure eight could have taken R.T. away from us. Isn't it? It's too frightening to even think about. I wouldn't know figure eight if I tripped over it. Well, if you ever do, it looks like this. Solid steel. It's real strong, unless it's tampered with. Tampered with? Yeah, like in saw it through. Then it can break just about any time you want it to. Like that. I'll see you, Lace. Am I missing something? Marlene, he broke it in his bare hands. The figure eight. Dan, why are you just sitting there? Just hold on a second. I'm confused. What are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm telling you that he did it. He did it. He set the whole thing up, don't you see? And then he let me know it as if to say, what are you going to do about it? Lacey. Are you sure you're not just jumping to conclusions? Think about it. R.T. is his son, too. He loves him. Not to mention the fact he easily could have been killed also. What? Honey, look, you didn't know what a figure eight looked like any more than I did before this afternoon. Or maybe he was just trying to show you what could have happened. Yeah. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. You're the two people I trust most in this world, that I depend on. He did this on purpose. He planned it. He risked my son's life to prove to me that he's not through with me. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, I guess. Hands still hurt a little bit. Well, RT's lucky to be alive because of you. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I didn't do anything. Listen, uh, I don't like bothering you at work, but we gotta have a little private conversation. How much more private can you get? Unless you're wearing a wire. <laughs> Listen, Lacey's upset. 
She says last night at the hospital you showed her a figure eight. She says I showed her a figure eight. Yeah. She says you broke it right in front of her. I don't know what that means. Well, it means she thinks you had something to do with what happened. She thinks that. Poor Lace. Well, that's what she thinks. And I told her I'd talk to you about it. Are, are you saying that this conversation never took place? No, it took place all right. Even the part about the figure eight. I told her that they look like this. As far as the breaking part's concerned, I can only think that maybe she got confused because some of my keys fell off onto the floor. I should get a new key ring, I guess, but I'm kind of attached to this one. I made it a metal shop. You know, my first year in prison. I guess this is harder on her than I realized. Coming back into my son's life, wanting to be a father. I mean, she goes from being sweet one minute to this kind of thing. What do you mean, sweet one minute? We talk on the phone, you know. You talk on the phone? She didn't tell you that? No. No, she didn't. Look, Dan, I don't want to let any cat out of any bag, OK? Let me just get back to work. I'll see you later. Look, let me ask you one other question. Um, why do you always call her Lace? I mean, you always do that. Habit, I guess. When we were together, that was my little name for her. You two were together? When we had our, I'll put it this way, when we dated. She didn't tell you about that? I'll see ya. Thanks. Uh, just don't owe Dan me, Lacey. He said that's what he always used to call you, that that was his, um, his little name for you. Don't let him do this. Don't let him do this. Why didn't you tell me? What? That you dated him. You told me that he raped you, but you never told me you dated him. We had two dates, if you could call it that. We were never intimate. You know, I really don't know what to think anymore. I mean, first of all, I, I find out that you never told me the truth to begin with. And then when that comes out, I find out that you never told me the truth about having dated the guy. I mean, come on, Lacey, look at it from my point of view. I'm sorry. I didn't think it was important. Maybe I made a mistake thinking that. I guess I've been making a lot of them lately. You want to hear everything? Here's everything. We had two dates. And the last one, he invited me to this little house he was renting. Said he had a surprise for me. When I got there, he locked the door and he said, here's your surprise. And he started to unbuckle his pants. And I tried to scream, and I tried to run, I tried to fight. But he cornered me in the kitchen. And I grabbed one of those spray cans and I sprayed him in the face with it. I was hoping it was one of those insect killers or oven cleaners or something poisonous. But it wasn't. It was just one of those sickeningly sweet room deodorizer sprays. The smell was all over him. I'll never forget the smell. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting off the track here. I want to tell you everything. Like how when I bit him on the arm, he got the kitchen knife. I think he was glad that I bit him. It gave him an excuse to cut me, which he did. Twelve years later, the scars are still there, inside and out. I don't know what to say.
no idea you shopped here. I usually don't. I was just coming back late from a job over in Pineview. You look great. Well, it's just my normal work rags, but thanks. I was in the mood for some spaghetti tonight. I don't know. Mama Pesca, you ever try it? Really bad. That's what I figured. Then again, I'm half Italian, so I may be overreacting. Now, my marinara sauce is not to be believed. The flavors, the aromas. Ooh la la. <laughs> Sounds irresistible, especially to a man who has uh, spaghetti on his mind. <sighs> I should go. Hey, Marlene, um, I know this little place, uh, Belcampos, real Italian cooking. Fresh baked bread. What do you say? I don't think we should, Keith, really. Why not? What did Lacey put out a restraining order for 500 feet with you two? Lacey. Is anything wrong? No, no, I'm fine. If I, uh, sound out of breath, it's because I, I just got in. I ran into this guy from the office, and, uh, he asked me out to dinner, so I thought, well, why not? What's up? Keith's making me crazy. He's gotten to Dan now, and he's telling him a lot of lies about our past. Lacey, you know Dan has always been the jealous type. I'm telling you about Keith, what he's doing now. And it's working. I mean, that's the frightening part. He's got RT completely mesmerized, and he's got Dan thinking, oh, I don't know what, that I might be attracted to Keith or something. Can you imagine that? Well, I don't think it's fair to blame it all on Keith, do you? What's going on here? First Dan, now you? Lacey, I'm really tired. Can we have this conversation tomorrow? Yes. Okay. We'll talk tomorrow. Good night.
best. Are you Eugene? Depends on who's talking. Keith always called me Lace. So here we are, eyeball to eyeball with the competition. Your lipstick's a little too pale if you don't mind my saying. I go with a touch of red. Your message said you had something to tell me. You want to know something? He doesn't care about plants. He hates them. But he spent a lot of time in the prison shop. He knows locks as well as anyone here. I want him back. I really don't care how. He's planning to kill you. He's a bad man. One of the few truly evil men that I've met. And honey, I've met my share. How? What's his plan? He's been working on it for years. He's going to invade your life like he did your body. He'll take everyone from you, one by one. And when everyone's gone, when you're finally alone, he'll end it. Eugene, I've come a long way. I need help. Can you help me? Maybe. Tell me. Why should I? He used you like he used me. Eugene, please. I'm scared and I'm tired. I go to sleep afraid and I wake up afraid. Poor baby. Try sleeping here for 20 years. Eugene, please. How are you gonna sleep now? What can I do? Mom? What's that? It's a gun. I didn't know you had a gun. What do you have a gun for? I've had it for a long time. Since before you were born. I thought you were asleep. I was reading. RT, we have to talk. What about? I know how excited you are to have Keith around and everything, but... I need to talk to you about some things I haven't told you before. You mean about Dad? He already told me all about it. About what? You know, the rape and all that. What did he tell you? He told me that you'd be talking to me about it. He told me how sometimes women get mad afterwards and say things to get a man in trouble. Oh, R.T., that's not true. He said you'd say that. It's okay, Mom. I'm not mad at you for anything. He's not either. He understands. He even likes you. I'm gonna go to bed.
Dan? Hi, Lucy. I I'm sorry to bother you. That's okay. What can I do for you? I've missed you. Yeah. I guess I've been pretty busy with everything. Could I see you? When? I don't know. It doesn't have to be a big deal. I just want to talk to you. I'm going to a PTA meeting at RT school tonight. Maybe you could swing by and... Wouldn't take long, we could go for coffee. Well, let me see what I can do. Um, look, I gotta go now, okay? Okay. So it's always something of a problem, trying to strike a balance between the parents' concern over the nutritional value of cafeteria food and the students' preference for junk food. Incidentally, junk food does have quotes around it, lest we offend one of our supporters. Next question. I was wondering. Excuse me, sir. Could you please stand and introduce yourself? Certainly. Hi. Hi. My name is Keith Wells, and I guess you could say I'm the new parent on the block. And I guess I'm just concerned about all this budget crisis and school cutbacks I've heard about and whether that will affect this school district and my son R.T.'s education. That's a big question, Mr. Wells. If you can wait till our next meeting, we will have a special report on the budget issues. due time, Liz. All in due time. I'm warning you. You're violating the restraining order. For what? Attending a PTA meeting as a concerned parent? Or for going to my car afterwards? Call a cop. Right. Give it up, Liz. I can have you any time I want to. Welcome to the jungle, Liz.
None of us can answer the phone right now, but we'll be happy to get back to you as soon as we can. Lacey, I want to tell you something. I just hope you don't hate me for it. You don't believe anything I've told you. Lacey, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you, and I'm worried about RT. Since when am I the villain in this piece? I mean, ever since the other night on the phone, you've been, I don't know, distant and critical. What's going on? Well, it's like you've gone overboard. It all began with that incredible fuss you made over the figure eight business. Even, even Dan said he was afraid you were losing it. Like you finally found someone to blame for everything in your life that's not working. You don't listen to anyone. You live in your own world and it's a very black and white world, Lacey. Truth is, I think you should seek professional help. <sighs> He's gotten to you too, hasn't he? Who? You know who? I don't know how he did it. I don't think I want to know. <sighs> Please. Marlene, don't lie to me. I'd rather you didn't say anything at all. This is sad. How'd we let this happen, you and me? I would have bet anything on us going the distance. And I saw us in our little lawn chairs and our shawls, sipping tea in the afternoon. I'm sorry. Give me his number. I know you have it. At least you can do that for me. You going out? Yes. Do you want to sit her? No. What's that? A tape recorder. It's new? You just bought it? Mm-hmm. Why? Where are you going? Artia, I want to be honest with you. If things don't change with Keith and our whole situation, we're gonna have to make some new plans. What do you mean? What new plans? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but... One thing we may have to consider is moving for a while. Mom! RT, listen to me. No, you listen! You said when we moved here that we wouldn't move anymore. That's what you said. You said this was home, but you lied. Like you lied about my dad. Wait a minute, you listen to me. I am trying to do what's best for both of us. And all I'm getting is criticism, and I'm sick of it. I'm your mother, and I deserve more. I know more about what's going on than you do. I need a little faith right now, okay? It's gonna ruin everything.
Your way will be right with you. Thank you. Chateau Dajon, 1981. Maitre d' said it wasn't a very good year for French Bordeaux. I said, never mind. It wasn't a very good year for me either. I didn't mention to him that that was the year I went to prison. I remember less. Hmm. I didn't know that you smoked. There are a lot of things you don't know about me. It's a bad habit. So, how's Dan? Fine. Good. He's a nice guy. He's a little bit on the jealous side, don't you think? <laughs> Can we stop this little charade and get down to business? I want to know just what it'll take for you to leave us alone. A bullet. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? RT told me you have a gun. If you have a gun, you have a box of bullets. 50 bullets to a box. It won't take 50. Just one. That piece of metal you showed me that night at the hospital, the figure eight? You rigged it to break so R.T. would fall while you were climbing at Lake Jennings, didn't you? Is that a yes? I know damn well it is. I arranged the whole thing. I planned it for weeks. You almost killed R.T. Your own son, as you're so fond of putting it. It's nothing personal. Nothing personal? Uh -uh. Your own flesh and blood? Don't you have any feelings about him at all? What's the point of all these questions, Liz? I need to uh, understand just why you're doing this to us. Is it because you committed a crime of violence against me and society sent you to prison for it? You sent me to prison, lady. That's society. It was you and you only. You took away every dream I ever had. No more baseball, no more young buck, no more nothing. You want to hear something ironic? Huh? I mean, you'll love this. My second day in prison, I was raped. Yeah, me, held down by five guys. And afterwards, one of them smiled and said, welcome to the jungle. Well, I knew right then that one day I'd say it to you. It took me over 10 years, but here we are. So tell me, Lacey, how does it feel? Huh? To know that you're dying piece by piece, inch by inch. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. Good evening. Would you like to hear the specials for tonight? I think I have to go to the restroom.
my way. I need the phone. What happened? It was Keith. Keith? RT? Hi. None of us can answer the phone right now, but we'll be happy to get back to you as soon as we can. If you'll be patient and wait for the beat. RT? Pick up the phone, honey. If you can hear me, pick up the phone, sweetheart. It's really important. RT? If you pick up this message, I want you to go across the street to the Dorsey's and wait for me there. I'm at Marlene's and I'm coming right home. But you must get out of the house. Please, get out of the house. Marlene, talk to the police. Tell them to come over to my house. Tell them it's an emergency. Tell them anything you want. Please, please just get in there. Please Marlene, see. if you ever cared anything about me, please do this for me. I'm begging you. If anything happens to me, Give them that. Give who this? The police! Lacey!
wake him up, and I'll kill him. He's got a date with a knife, Liz. A kitchen knife. And you're late. You're so late. It's disgraceful. Twelve years late. Twelve years late. That's how you were meant to be taken, you know? With a kitchen knife. Death and sex. They have a lot in common. They both take you. And every woman is meant to be taken in a particular way. No. I have the tape. <laughs> I have the tape. I have the tape. How little you understand, Lace. This is not about a tape. And this is not about will he be caught or won't he be caught. This is about destiny. Yours and mine. They're inseparable. You saw to that. <laughs> what, you want to fight, huh? <laughs> You want another? It's the place. You let them inside, and I swear I'll be up the stairs and in your son's room before anyone can stop me. You understand? Yes. We received an emergency call about an intruder at this address, ma'am. An intruder? That's right. Are you Lacey Stewart? Yes, I am. But there's no intruder. I was just getting ready for bed. No uh, intruder. Everything's fine. Any evidence of a break-in or burglary? No. I've been here all night. You all right, ma'am? Yes, why? Your nose is bleeding. Oh, that. I've been trying to stop that all night. And I get these in the dry climate. Yeah, that happens to my son sometimes, too. I'm sure, you're all right. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Well, sorry to bother you. It's okay. You have a good night. Wait. Who called? Ma'am? About the intruder. Oh. Um, Marlene Thomas. Said she was a friend of yours. Yes, she is. about the nosebleed. Long past caring, Liz. 